Hey there, and we're back with Reiner from Rydia. Hey there, we're back with Reiner from Rinia, um, and we've got our next uh, adhesive here, the Cole de Cologne. Mm -hmm. Very good. Awesome. So what is what is awesome about this adhesive? Okay, so we had a look at the top fit mm -hmm. in, the last, uh, in the last installment. So application-wise, exactly the same, like any contact cement. Yep. You put it on both sides, you let it dry, you stick it. In this case, you have a five to 45 minute open time window. Okay. So five minutes minimum drying time, up to 45 minutes cold bonding time. After that, you reheat it if you have to wait longer for any reason. Okay. Now, what sets it apart? Um, this is pretty much the only neoprene based adhesive that can bond certain synthetics like vinyl, like thermoplastic rubber, um, typically, those are bonded with polyurethane-based cements. Okay. Now, what's the difference, right? I mean, these are yeah, highly absolutely. technical terms. What's the point? Um, Neoprene-based adhesives are generally much easier to work with than PU-based or urethane-based adhesives. These are generally industrial cements, okay. shoe industry products. And they're great. They're, they work really well. They work on the materials that they're using there. Mm -hmm. But they mostly require heat activation. They require pressure. They require pressing with a fitting last in the shoe world. And that is something that most hobbyists, most small sketch shops don't have. Sure, shoemakers work with lasts, right. but um, with a PU-based product, uh, hammering it down in most cases is not, not an option. You need to get the activation temperatures right, and so on and so on. Which is one reason why we came up with this, mostly aimed at shoe repair and mm -hmm. bespoke shoe making in the 1980s, um, <clears throat> to basically get the ease of use of a neoprene-based contact cement but also the bonding capabilities in addition to that on those synthetics on uh, as with a, with the urethane cement. So it's sort of a crossover. It's a chemical modification of the neoprene that, that does that. Okay. Uh, makes it plasticizer resistant more than anything else. And it also works with chlorination primers on unit soles, on TPR, on certain rubber types okay. where that is needed. Again, mostly a shoe making, shoe repair, shoe modification thing, but... Um, in the leatherworking industry, yes, shoemaking is also something that has gained more popularity. Yeah. Um, there are these uh, sneaker kits out there, for instance. Yeah. Um, there's rubber materials that require a little more nowadays than your classic contact cement. Right. Rubber used to be one of the easiest materials to work with. Used to be. And... Then innovation set in. Oh, <laughs> let's do this. Let's do abrasion resistant. Let's do climbing rubber. Uh -huh. Wonderful stuff. Those rock climbing shoes. Really amazing. Amazing materials. I mean, you throw them on the wall and they stick almost. Right. So bonding that is a real challenge unless you have the right products. That's where this comes in. Okay. So Very neat. There's uh, on our website and also on a lot of the marketing materials we hand out on the catalogs, there's a materials chart that explains how to recognize all of these different materials. Mm -hmm. What is rubber, what is TPR, what is polyurethane, what is this, 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 this. And then if a pretreatment is necessary, we have primers, chemical primers for that. Okay. Um, and then how to work with, let's say, call the cologne on either the raw surface or the prime surface. Um, okay. Again, the primers are something that's mostly interesting for shoe repair and shoemaking. Right. Not so much for the for the leatherworking industry because those materials are not that common here. Right. TPR soles, typical example though, they usually need a halogenation primer. Um, and that's a sneaker sole. Okay. Most of the sneaker soles nowadays are TPR. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's look at some uh, something a little simpler here, like a rubber sole. This could be this could be done with a top fit as well. Okay. I'm just going to do it with a color cologne in this case. Now. <clears throat> 
one thing you will notice in direct comparison to the top fit. This looks a little clearer, but it will draw strings a little easier than the top fit. The top fit pretty much cuts off right away, right? Okay. You take the brush off and done. Um, this, especially if you have a can that's a little bit, uh, little bit older, this tends to draw strings a bit more. And that is not a quality issue, actually. That is the cause of what we do to make that neoprene resistant against the plasticizer. Basically, we, uh, we change it chemically, we make it longer, we make the molecules longer, and that is what causes it to draw strings more easily. Interesting. So it's just something to keep in mind. Not, right. not the chemical explanation, but just the fact that it is... Just when you're looking at the product, right. that's fine. Like, it's not a fault, it is actually working as designed. Gotcha. So on this one, it looks like you need a pretty hefty layer. Yeah, I just, uh, it, it looks more, like more, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, it, it's not getting absorbed at all. I mean, this oh. is a closed surface right. on leather. You get some more absorption going there. I'll just, and I would guess that on this leather, we only need one. I mean, I have worked with this before. So with, with this particular leather, so I would imagine we just need one coat. But we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. And then we put the two together. Now, I'll just do this by hand here. Usually when, uh, when putting shoe soles onto shoes, of course, again, we're talking small scale workshops here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in the repair world, in the shoe orthopedic shoe modification world, I would do this with a press. Okay. Right? Uh, yeah. Either with a last, if you're building a shoe from the ground up, um, or with a, like, a, like an interior pressure plate or something that goes into the shoe and just presses it down. You can hammer mm -hmm. with the uh, solvent-based products. There are water-based products that are intended for shoe soling, not the Aquarium 315, other variants, uh, but those definitely re require a press and a fitting last. Okay. Which is one reason why for bespoke makers and anyone who is working on a small scale in the shoe making repairing modification uh, business i would go with the solvent based adhesive okay at least for 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 soling right it's not a, a water resistance issue or that it wouldn't hold properly it's a pressure question more than anything yeah. else getting the pressure right because uh, with solvent based you can if you don't if you don't hit it right the first time you can always hammer it some more, put it in the press again. With water base, you have to get it done in one shot. Oh, really? With those kinds of products. You yeah. have to get the temperature right and you have to get the pressure right. To get the... Actually, the most shoe manufacturing, mm -hmm. there is not, if you, if you look at scales, most of the shoe manufacturing for mass markets is not taking place here, it's not taking place in Germany or Europe in general, it's mostly yeah. in Asia nowadays. Yeah. And those huge shoe factories, they even work water-based nowadays. Hmm. Specialized products designed for, for that application, yeah. but also for that process. And that's a process that is almost impossible to replicate completely in a small environment. Would work, right? You don't have the machines, you don't have the, yeah, the, 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 the processes, right? right? Yeah. You, can't, you can't do that. In that time frame so we need products that allow you to do what the factories do or to get the same outcome right but with tools in this case adhesives that are right for 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 what you do there um <clears throat> and that still don't kill you so that, <laughs> that is a bit of a <laughs> it's always good <laughs> bit of a thing so uh as i said for the top fit this product here does not contain toluene, does not contain MEK. Yes, it still contains hazardous chemicals, all documented in the SDS sheet, right. but the, um, the effects are less hazardous. Let's put it that way. Yeah, we have to be, we have to be honest here. Right. So while this is drying, it's just uh, this. This is the thinner we make for mm -hmm. the solvent-based products. Works with the top fit, works with the Col de Cologne. Um, similar solvent combination. Actually, for thinning the Col de Cologne, it's possible with this, certainly. We make another product that is even more suitable called Desol. 
Diesel. Diesel, not diesel, like diesel fuel. <laughs> but, uh, D E S O H L. Okay. Uh, which, if you know a bit of German, sort of means get the soul off. Oh. Yeah. So it's originally a soul stripper. It's something that okay. repair shops use to put on leather soles and just rip them off. Um, and this actually has a similar solvent combination to this. So it's a lot, slightly different to the top fit in that regard. Interesting. But the thinner will work for both. Just okay. general purpose. And also for Will care. that thinner take a sole off? Uh, if you use a whole lot of it. Yeah. So, well, it, it will redissolve the adhesive mm -hmm. because that is what, it, what a thinner does. So if you took a whole tub of this and threw the shoe in there, mm -hmm. it would dissolve the bonds in there. So it would come apart, um, which is a little bit of overkill in this case. So sure. uh, the desole is, is a lot more, uh, more efficient there. Um, you can, because that, that is a real world problem mm -hmm. that this would happen, not because you took baths and thinner with your shoes on, but uh, imagine <clears throat> you're making a shoe Okay. Or repairing a shoe or modifying a shoe for someone who is working in a chemical factory, who's working at a gas station, who is working in a kitchen, right? Yeah. Cooking oils and grease and, and whatever. So all of these substances break down adhesive. Okay. The colic cologne is more resistant to that than, for instance, the top fit or okay. the aquilin to begin with. But um, if you're walking through grease the entire day with a leather sole, which you might not want to do in the first place, but <laughs> let's just go there, right? You could do that. Um, we make a product called Renya Hardener C, so hardener then the letter C, which can be mixed into that to make it fully resistant against heat up to about, let's see, 120, 130 degrees Celsius, which is 250 Fahrenheit, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so think firefighter, yeah. yeah, emergency services, police officers, army boots, that sort of thing. Um, makes it resistant against chemicals, against oils, against grease, gasoline, that sort of thing. Oh, wow. uh, then taking off the sole with thinner or diesel wouldn't work anymore because right. it just made it resistant. But um, but that's your application. Right. That, that is what you want. Yes, that's, that's, that's what you want to go for. If I'm a firefighter. I'm not really too worried probably about resoling my shoes at some point. Yeah. I just want them to not catch fire right. or right. burn or off. Not fall off. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, although in this case, I mean, the, the heat resistance that the firefighter boot is made for is way more than what the adhesive has to withstand. Because right after the adhesive is the insole and then the foot. Mm -hmm. And you don't want 400 degrees on your foot. Right. To begin with. So... The construction kind of has to take care of that. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are, I would say, going in the right direction here. So you said this was 5 to? 5 to 45 five minutes. To so I, I put it on maybe a little bit thick here. So we definitely don't need another coat. This is fine. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few spots here where I would actually let it dry a bit more. But let's just, uh, for sake of the argument here, let's just put it together. And again, if this was a real shoe, I would definitely pressure. put some pressure on this. Now, what are we talking about here pressure-wise? What does that mean? So in general, anywhere between, I would say, about 15 to 45, 50 PSI okay. on this, depending on what your materials can withstand. So if, if you have a press, mm -hmm. now, of course, your hammer doesn't have a PSI gauge on there, right. obviously, or your fingers. But let's say you have a press, a pneumatic or a mechanical press. Um, <clears throat> now, on, this mater on these materials here, on a rubber sole, on leather, you can go up all the way. Let's see, 45, 50, 60 PSI, no problem. If you are bonding, let's say, soft EVA foam to leather, uh -huh. sure, you can stick that in the press and hit it with everything it's got. But what's going to happen is it's going to mash it together, stretch the foam, mm -hmm. and that will rip the adhesive. Okay. Right? So the layer, the adhesive layer doesn't stretch. Right. If the material under it stretches because it is compressed, it will rip and that will destroy your bond. Mm -hmm. um, so pressure, if you have something that exerts pressure, pressure should be adapted to what you're working with. Absolutely. If you have materials that can't stand up to it, sure, hit it. The more the better and you don't need to keep it in there that long. Okay. 
Um, if so you like have, if you were like yeah. a, just a mechanical press that you're right. putting two pieces, so just like I don't right. know, 10 seconds? Um, usually what we say, one 15 PSI, about 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, 45 PSI, 15 seconds, order of magnitude. Okay. If you keep it in there longer, it doesn't hurt. Okay. But so just longer is better. Right. Just right. to, okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So it's... Uh, Say for not putting pressure on there, this it's isn't too good. bad. <laughs> okay, um, so rubber soles in, in this case, I mean, this was a very easy easy rubber to work yeah. with. Uh, rubber should always be sanded. Okay. Leather, whatever cement you're using, doesn't matter which brand, doesn't matter which product, either work on the flesh, flesh side mm -hmm. or if you work on the grain side, you have to roughen it up to get a permanent bond. You have to get into the fiber. With the rubber, with plastics, with any other material, roughening up enlarges the surface. Mm -hmm. So you have more to grab on to, and that increases the bonding strength. Yeah. Uh, certain synthetic man-made materials like thermoplastic rubber require, and some modern rubbers as well, like that climbing rubber, for instance, they require a chemical pretreatment. Right, that's what, like what you're talking about. That, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Halogenation primers mostly, chlorination. And that's opening up the surface, I assume? That's removing some sort of a layer? Yeah, that is actually or more... Is that, that, that is reacting with the surface, okay. changing it chemically. So the issue in this case is the adhesive cannot lock on to that surface, right? Even if you increase the surface area by roughening, it just doesn't fit. Right. So what you do is you sort of create an interface with that chemical primer, you change the surface chemically on the surface, and then you have something that the adhesive can hold on to. Okay. That's the that's very simple chemical explanation for that. But again, that's a different product. Works with this though. Okay. So, so if you are doing shoes and you have yeah. these different types of rubbers, right. you can look up the different items. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's all on the website. There's yeah. videos on our YouTube channel that deal with that because this is more of a of a shoe making, shoe, manufa shoe, shoe manufacturing too, a mm -hmm. uh, shoe repair problem issue. Yeah, and I, very specific. It, it shows that that do that, yeah, like the SSA, the, uh, the, the, the shoe repairs uh, convention. That is the main topic yeah. I discuss, right? People ask, how do I recognize this? How I do that? How do I do, uh, do, I do this? Very cool. Okay. All right. Well, so with our um, Renia Cola de Cologne, uh, the number on this one is 751-13 on this guy. And then if you are interested in the thinner, which once again works with both of these items, both the Top Fit and the uh, Cola de Cologne, we're 751-11 on the thinner. So, all right. Well, we're on to the next one.